Hans Zimmer's music and James Newton Howard. Um, I should say right at the outset that I had actually completed a full tutorial for the main theme a few years ago. It's on the channel. You can have a look at that, and I'm sure you will after you get past this introduction. Um, but the way that I had arranged it a few years ago, I had started sort of abruptly right at the beginning of the theme, and it ended kind of abruptly. So a member uh, decided to write an intro and an outro for it so that it really bookends the piece and makes it feel complete. So uh, a shout out to you, Ahmed, for doing that, man. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I'll jump right into it. This might not be relevant to know if you're discovering this tutorial series anew, but I think it's um, worth giving props to, uh, to our member for doing that. So here it is. I'll play the first part of this for you, then I'll start from the beginning, I'll show you how to play it yourself, and then it'll lead to the main theme, and then there's an outro to finish it off. Here it goes. thing about this is there's a lot that you can recycle here in the right hand especially we have that sort of Alberti bass type um, figure uh, let me give you the right hand right away because obviously it's the left that gives you the melody let's take care of the accompanying uh, the accompanying figures first it's D minor we're all the way down here if middle C is over here we are in this position two one and four. So this is the pattern. Two, one, four, one. That group of four notes repeats and changes positions, but that's the pattern throughout. So for the first bar, we have four groupings of these four notes. Here's your first bar. Second bar, identical. From a technical point of view, just make sure that when you're learning this, uh, you know, initially when it's slow, you won't have to really work too hard to, um, you know, devise a technique to make this comfortable because at a slow tempo, it will be comfortable. But as you speed this up, something like this, what you kind of want to start doing is treat the thumb uh, like it's a little bit less important than the two notes above it because the thumb is just there to fill in the rest of the harmony. It's really this. Right? And in between all of those right hand notes is where the where the A's come in. Right. And be careful that as you're doing this and speeding it up that you don't uh, tighten up the thumb. That's really important. And in fact, you should be comfortable enough to there's a little bit of a rotation here to manage uh, the thumb. But anyway, the bottom line is with the rotation and the way that the right hand top notes are playing, you shouldn't be tightening up around the thumb, especially because you're sort of across your whole body at this point. You're so low down on the keys. It's very easy for the thumb to tighten up and you can injure yourself. So that's why I'm telling you that in advance. All right, so there's your first two bars, right? Just this position in that pattern over and over again. The left hand for the first bar has an octave F, then an octave A, at the very bottom, last note of the piano. That's it for the first two bars. I'm gonna put that together, that's... I'll play it without pedal first so you can keep track.
the heavy, loose, but for the moment quiet. Start, you know, with uh, with a fairly withdrawn sort of dynamic. Very quiet. With the pedal, be sure that you're not too heavy on the thumb here so that it doesn't get too messy. Moving on. The right hand now moves into this position. Thumb moves up to B flat. Top two notes remain the same. And the pattern remains. Four of these. The bar after that. Bottom two notes stay put. And the top note changes to G. It's this G minor. Same pattern. So from one bar back, we'll have B flat major. You can see it's an octave B flat in the left. And then G minor. in the left. Simple enough. Let me stitch all four of these bars together. As far as pedal is, is concerned, I think uh, you can change the pedal on every bar. Um, but depending on your instrument, you can keep one pedal for the first two bars. Play around with that and see if it sounds good. See if your instrument is too boomy, you know, because at the end of the day, the first two bars are just D minor. It's the same harmony. It's just whether or not it's too muddy, just in terms of the, the range, you know, uh, for you to have to change between them. But you can mess around with that and see what you'd like. I think with this piano that I have, the piano sound that I'm using, I can use one pedal for it and I think it sounds good. So keep the pedal down. I think that sounds clean enough. Change pedal. our next group. Right. Same pattern in the right hand. Position is one, three, and five. C sharp in the left. Next, we come back to D minor. Left hand D octave. Right hand, same grouping and position that you started the piece with. Simple enough. Next bar, left hand drops to D flat. The D in the right hand also drops to D flat, but the outside notes remain. That's your position. Same pattern. Stitch it all up at a leisurely tempo. For those from those uh, first two bars that I mentioned where you can hold the pedal down uh, for both of them, everywhere else the pedal changes with the left hand new octave. All right, so continuing on, uh, the, the introduction continues and I'll be continuing it on in my library.
where I always have my stuff. And that's where I'll be continuing this intro. Fear not, it's free to try. There's a free trial. Once you start that, you can cancel anytime you'd like. And of course, you'll have this uh, whole tutorial series as well as everything else. You know, the whole library will be available to you during that trial. And you can see if you'd like it or not. But anyway, you know, risk-free. Join, uh, join up and I'll see you soon in just a bit.